today I have my hands full because I am going to be doing a succulent repotting. So I had potted these succulents up, oh, I don't know now. I can't even remember. It's gotta be over a couple of years ago. But something with most succulents is you'll see that they'll start to grow a little leggy. So you'll see this sedum right here has gotten a little leggy. This Colin Coey right here is getting a little leggy. You could see even it stuck, it stuck out some roots. Um, I have my crassulas right here, which have a tendency to grow this way, so they're not looking that leggy. But I could definitely cut back some of these plants, and I had been waiting to cut them back. Um, and I got a nice order of some new succulents. And also I've tested ones that kind of stay a little bit more compact so that when you start to build them out in container gardens, you could kind of go for the ones that aren't going to start to get um, really long. So you'll see just on the edge of the video here, you'll see this Echeveria. It's actually quite, let me bring it in a little bit more. So you can see it's flowering right now, which is actually really beautiful. I have a lot in bloom, but you could see that this one has gotten a little leggy itself and that used to be very compact. And that's totally normal, especially if you're growing succulents on a windowsill in the Northeast, I've found. Um, so if you're doing container planting, they always need to be a little bit cut back. Um, you could take propagation, like little cuttings. So even with the sedum, if you just take off a little leaf like that close to the stem, then that will actually eventually root up and become a larger plant. So if you have the space to propagate, then you know absolutely do so. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do though is I have some cutting utensils here and I am going to use a little bit of isopropyl alcohol just to sanitize them because I actually can't remember what I used these four last, and even though I know the knife is clean because it's been washed, um, I'm still going to use this to disinfect. These are some of my popular trimmers, and I think they work really well, these little Japanese scissors that are good for bonsais. And I have some other tools here that I'll point out. I do have some scissors. I could probably take the scissors and actually clean those too, just in case I need that. I have some really gritty soil, so you'll see the mix here is um, a lot of perlite and I have some kind of like fur bark chips that are cut up really finely and then I also have some bonsai mixture, so I really like to actually make this a little bit more of a gritty mixture, so I'll show you that over here in the above head camera. Actually it looks quite nice. I also put some water in it because I have a lot of plants that are bare root so you can see like the bare root plants that I have here. This is a Haworthiopsis. And these, because they're bare root, I just actually wanna give them a little bit of soil mixture that is a little bit more um, not so uh, dry to begin with because then they'll actually be able to root themselves a little bit easier in the substrate. So I think I'm just gonna get started to be honest with you. I don't think I'm gonna be talking very much because basically what I wanna do is get a bunch of these planted up so that I could go on my very merry way and, and actually get a lot of these off of my table um, and then just have a little bit more of a windowsill garden again. Should have brought a compost bag in, but I didn't, so I'll have to wait to compost those. Now, oftentimes, if you want to plant up the stems of these, you'd let them superize over, which just means to harden or callus off. Look at how these sedums have grown over. This Colin Coey that looks like the tip kind of broke off a little bit and that's just starting to root up it looks like. These will root up actually at the base of the leaf. So 
Some of these sedums have already started to take root, as you could see. This one right here. So if I could hold that up, you could see it has a little one hanging off of it already. This one's already rooting up as well. To see kind of what's in here, here's another sedum I can take out. So this is my Crassula tabularis, looks like. And then this one got a little bit too dry, unfortunately. This is another Crassula, so that will have to kind of move out. That was my Crassula tecta. I have another one of those that I'm growing, not in a container garden. I found that my Crassulas need a little bit of extra attention, unfortunately. These are my Calicia naviculariuses. They need to be definitely rooted in here a little bit better. Wow, a lot of these are rooting up already. Look at that. So cute. Look at how they're rooting up already. Just kind of let nature take its course sometimes. Okay, I think I'm gonna try to get these sedums because the root stock is taking up a lot of space and we don't really have any sedums kind of growing off of this. Yeah, there you go. I got some Colin Coe in here. These are Colin Coe that had fallen off and are now starting to root up. I'm just gonna put those aside. Colin Coe could really take over a container planting. Wow, all these are starting to root up. That's so nice. Here's a little crassula right here. Tell I'm gonna to have to do a lot of vacuum cleaning after this. So I actually really like these Crassula tabularises. I think I'm just gonna cut off the tops though because they are getting a little leggy and it's probably actually not from being in the window but I had these sitting away from my window because I had them um, on my list of things to do which the list has gotten long because I was spending a lot of time actually editing these videos and not as much time taking care of my plants. I had my book tour that I have been doing, so that kind of took me away from doing a lot of things that I wanted to do, and uh, which is almost counterintuitive because I'm here tending to plants and that's kind of what this is all about, right? So these are like all little Colin Coeys that are kind of growing up here. Okay, yes, this little Crassula pubescens is actually growing up quite nicely. I guess I'm gonna leave that root stock in there because that's fully in there. There's some, this is the challenge with peat sometimes. It gets like really gloppy and it's hard to wet once it gets really dry, and it naturally gets dry, especially in my southwest facing window. So, you'll see I have a lot of interesting plants that I got in. Um, these will eventually can get a little taller. Um, this one right here as well, which may actually look really nice in this planter show you the planter up close because you can't see it from above, but look how beautiful that is. I really love the geometric shapes on the sides of this. I love the colors. Ah, oh, it's just really beautiful. I have a couple of these. So I like the way that this is still going. This is doing just fine. Might fill in with a little bit of soil. And just because the soil is wet doesn't mean I'm not going to give it a nice dose of watering again. You might see that I'm actually working with a spoon. And part of the reason for that is because it could just get into some of these tinier places that I can't often get into when I'm planting up containers like this. Oh, here's one that I have that's really nice. This is an Echeveria agavoides. I have a crustate, crustate version I highlighted this on uh, 365 Days of Plants. I love this one. It actually is, um, it grows very compact. It's not one of those ones, like you get some echeverias that start to really 
um, grow tall and un like very gangly. This one is not one that grows that way. So I, after doing a f number of these container plantings, I was like, mm, which ones am I going to buy that don't get too gangly? So you kind of, it's like kind of like trial and error. I mean, that's the fun of it. This even looks really beautiful, this color palette. Might be a little bit too big though. Let me see. Because I have these sedums right here. Let me show you. Pardon my reach. There you go. Look at these little sedums. They're cute. Okay. Yeah. These are pretty dry. This will definitely need a little bit of a drink. It's nice having the camera lens up here because now I can actually see what it looks like from the top. Okay, this one's a little needs a little drink too. Look at this. This is a little Crassula pagoda. I'm just gonna dip them in there a little water. I think I'll probably leave this one for another larger planting. Oh, this is nice. Look at this grassula. That kind of could fit really well right here. Let me remove some of this. That looks really nice. I like the color palette. It's the same kind of color palette. Yeah, I'll show you photos of what this, um, what this looked like when I first planted it because what it looks like when you first plant it to what it looks like even a few months later can be very different. But as I said, you start to get to know which plants start to grow out a little bit more. Sometimes it's nice when they grow out. Like I didn't mind having the sedums fall over the edges for a little while, but then they start to drop their leaves and hope to propagate elsewhere. I guess I could put some of these calicias back. These are the navicularises. They could get um, quite leggy too, but I don't think they look that bad. I've seen some botanical samples that look quite leggy. So it's not like you can prevent it sometimes in your house unless you're giving it like really insane top-down light. Sometimes in these little small areas, I'll just put these little Colin Cody's and sedums again so they can root up and fill in any of the soil gaps. I'll put this little crassula in here as well. It's nice. I had one of these, the Cristate versions, actually growing in one of my planters. It looks so good. Uh, but then when I went to move it, I was like, oh my God, it's so much bigger than the planter. So I had to, um, I had to give it its own planter because it got so large. Oh, look at this. Oh, it's a bit too much of the color palette. See if I put it there, it's too bright. Go with the similar sedum. Learn not to be too precious with um, some of these because, like I said, they start to, you may have to change them out in a few months anyway. But these are one of the ones that, like, it took a while for me to, to get back to this. I have a couple other things on my list of things to do that <laughs> need to be done. Put these Colin Coe in there again. This is another navicularis. Just needs to be in there a little bit. Yep. These are the sedums. Gone but not forgotten. Put this 
one right over here. I'll engender to make the roots go down, but the, it will peace of mind that the plant knows which way the roots should go. This one was pretty far along, so find a little space for him here. All these Colin Coey, they're so, they are so good at propagating. The sedum for Phariseum. I'll go right here. I like to put like little names for them. This one needs a little bit more soil. Hard to even put it with this tiny spoon. Okay. Almost better to use your fingers. I tend to like this grittier soil. It's a little less peat and more grit. These sedums definitely needed a little bit of water. So if you look at that, that's one bowl made up. Probably not some of my best work, but in the side it kind of looks cool. You look at it at different angles and it starts to really come together. I love that color. Look at that bowl. That's so nice. Okay, so that's one down. It's wonderful. Let me just put that over here. I hurt my back a little bit, so I'm just kind of like moving a little bit more slowly. This one is the next one on my list because it's another one of those big bowls that I would really like to put back in my window. <laughs> These I just took unrooted. Look at this sedum, oh my goodness. Yeah, see these sedums? If you don't want like things getting leggy, these are probably not the ones to put into your bowl. And these leaves just break off very easily. They propagate very easily. So this is a Haworthia viscosa. It's a little dry, because um, again, these have been a little neglected by me, because I was supposed to get to these plantings a month or two months ago. They've been off my windowsill for quite a long time. They've been moved from one part of the room to the other. So I do like keeping these Crassula muscosas here. Muscosa means moss-like. These Haworthia opsis here, this one, Little tephro cactus is uh, spiking some things. It looks like it's got a little um, rot right here. So I might take that out all together. This root of the sedum, you know, again, kind of took up the whole thing here. So I'm gonna move that out. This looks like it flowered probably remember it flowering, but um, this one was a retusa, but with a variation, cuminata. Take off some of the dry leaves here. This is the Crassula rupestris, I believe. Oh my goodness. Definitely needed a little TLC here, huh? This is a pretty nice gritty soil mixture already, so that it has going for it. Now, this one I could actually plant a little bit more like with these guys, because I have the space for it. So let me take this out a little bit. Oh yes also well watered. I like that color. Whether it keeps this color, I don't know. Should in my southwest facing window, it gets blazingly hot there. It's really nice. 
I just feel tempted just to keep this in the same pot. These are my, I think these are Sempervivums. Yeah, chocolate kiss. They're really not that chocolate colored. These could get a little leggy too, so I'm gonna hold off on those. I definitely wanna keep this viscosa in though. I like that look. So this needs to start putting soil around it now that I've determined that I wanna keep this in. like about this trowel is that it's pretty flat so you could go down on the edges much more easily as opposed to if you have a trowel that's really curved I'm just working on a piece of cardboard that I got from a recent shipment. And I was like, oh, this is a nice flat piece of cardboard. I'm gonna use this for my plantings. I could also just do all Haworthia here. Ooh, this one's nice, look at this. That one's pretty. We have to wait on that one though. I could also do this. That's pretty cool, look at that. Yeah. Spiky looks of all these. He looks a little bit better here, like that. Let's see. Gotta find something for here. Here, I could use this gasteria that's flowering. Look at that little chunky root system right there. It's cool, right? nice. There's a little water coming out in here. I'll move this. See how that looks. Oh, let me put it up here. My arms look kind of weird <laughs> going up that way. There you go. Looks nice. I'm going to put some more plants around the edges here. Why not? Give the sedum a chance to grow. This one's already growing, so an opportunity to do that. There you go. It's ready for business. Okay, what's next? I actually want to repot some of these. These have a tendency to get really long root systems and it might not be good for this short of a thing. So I'm gonna save that for another time. And I think I'm gonna work on this little guy because look at this echeveria. <laughs> it's so leggy. Yeah, I'm just gonna remove some of these.
just do this. So. If I were really good, I'd wash this just in case there's no um, bugs or anything on it, but. is in here. This is nice. Actually. So what I'm going to do actually before these get confusing to me, I have these smaller ones. I just save these and if I get them again, I'll come up with a better order system. My workflow system for videos is pretty good and streamlined, but Sometimes with my plant naming, with these, it's not. There's so many cultivars of this that uh, it's really hard to know what is what because they all kind of look very similar. Here's another one. It's kind of got, it's really dry. This is how peat can get when it gets really dry. Look, it's in a plug even. That would be hard for it to kind of get out of its little girdle right here if I didn't do that. So there's a little bare root right there. That's fun. Look at that. That's all that's very nice. Hmm. I wonder if I could use this. soil in here. So if I could just put some of this back. I may not have enough room for this one. Let's see. She. I'm kind of like struggling with the roots. They're like right up against. I think what I'm going to do is break the soil a little bit more. God, it's so compact. The problem with peat. You just use primarily peat. That's why I like I like to move to my gritty mixtures. This makes it a little bit better. See how gritty this mixture is? It's like primarily stone. And that way the water just goes through, it remains airy. And when you get something that's too peaty, it dries out like that. And then when you wet it, it just doesn't get wet again. And it just, water runs off the side and doesn't wet the roots. And that could be a problem. to put the soil in here first and then create a space for the roots. Kind of do sometimes when I give a little bit more space because they do propagate by um, by off 
upset sometimes. material that I lost along the way over here. Some nice big chunks of perlite. I love the leaves of these. I think this is a graptopetalum. The way that they're faceted looks like they've been carved like a diamond. Much more compact. There you go. And a burning pottery. These are like all handmade, high hand fired pots too. I really like them. There. Looks nice, right? Okay. Oh, this one. Oh boy. <sighs> so this one has Kleinia in right here, this one, otherwise known as Senecio Jacobensii, but it's no longer Senecio. So um, I do like how this is planted in here. This is actually kind of a new planting. I kind of stuck it in here um, a little while ago and then forgot about it. So for the reasons that I mentioned before, I like this and it's going to probably over the edge, which is totally fine by me. Now, I could actually plant some of the taller guys in here. So here's some more ivory pagodas. And some moon glows. This one's got really long too, but I think I'm going to leave them in there. Um, let's put this moon glow over here. I would like to repropagate this though. He's so chunky. Let's get some of those nice leaves. This one won't work because I didn't get that too close to the stem. It's good if you take a few of these because sometimes some of them don't want to propagate. This is kind of the main centerpiece. I might actually remove these temporarily. Let me just put them out over here. This one's the only one that's not plant. This one's the only one that's actually rooted. So. might do something like this. Oh gosh, I just don't have enough space. I need to do like massive container plants. These are fun. These are like little jelly bean plants. Ooh, they both look so good. Thumb it. I think I'm gonna go with this just because it's a slightly different shape. These will probably get a little leggy. Problem is, I need to do this because this is really dry, this soil. The grower sent this is really wet right here, this soil. And some of these are actually rotting a little bit, so I'm going to remove those so there's doesn't invite root rot. There you go. See this? I just take those off. And this will get a little leggy, I know, but it looks so good initially. And this one could go right here. Yes, I like that. Moon glows right next to one another. Double it up. Double the fun. Nice, 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 nice. Yes. 
So these need to be rooted in there a little bit better. What will work too, I mean, besides that the soil is a little um, wet right here, we'll probably end up just doing another nice little drink of water. And what happens is when you put a little water in the soil, it helps root the plant, at least helps um, form around the root of the plant because if it's too airy, it's not going to grip onto anything and then the roots could dry out very easily. And even with container plantings, even like on my southwest windowsill, you will get some of these leaves blocking other out, leaves out and then you'll have a situation on your hands where some will just get leggier by nature because they're trying to reach up to the sun. And I don't say this, but for people who are new and I am saying something that's leggy, what I mean is that the internodes start to lengthen up. Internodes are just between the nodes. Nodes are where the leaf comes out of the stem and this starts to elongate so it's not as compact. So I don't wanna shy away from my newbies who are watching who might not know the some botanical lingo that I use. Oh, that is nice. I already love the way that that's planted. So here, the graptophyllum. These are really delicate. Might not be the best for this planting. Oh, I have some nice crassulas over here too. I don't want to wait to plant these in one of my pastel planters. These are crassulas. Ooh, that would look so nice in that one. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna wait on that one. Oh, this one still hasn't gotten planted up. That would look nice, the color palettes. And I have these Semper Vivums right here, which are also nice. I think I'll do that. So, let's start. always love how Semper Vivums turn out in indoor container plantings, but we'll give them a shot in this one. At least container plantings in my house. I don't want to say that they don't look good elsewhere, but I really like them outdoors, I have to say. But since I don't have an outdoor plot, whoops, this is what it's going to have to be in the meantime. Okay. Although I did plant, um, uh, I did plant some hardy succulents outdoors in the in the uh, like community garden this year, which is really nice. The grower put tape on this so that uh, the soil doesn't come flying out. I go back and forth whether I prefer something bare root or not. Obviously, with soil, it's a little bit more complicated. Break it. There you go. Ta -da. So I went with this Cristate version. Cristate means that it's like this genetic mutation that makes it um, form this way, like a ridge, like this mountainous ridge. And I found that Cristate versions of plants actually stay compact, more compact than some of their normal growth ones. And therefore I started to plant them in container planting a little bit more. And again, this is just through my own experience of planting these up and observing them and growing them to the point that they get leggy. <laughs> and then you're like, okay, I have to change this out. I like to over order the amount of succulents for these containers because I never know what will work. You know, you just kind of have to visually see how it'll all fit together. And on any given day, you might feel like you want to plant something that looks different. So if I planted this tomorrow, it probably would have looked like a different planting altogether, which is, is kind of fine. 
Now this, I wonder if I could just chop these all off and start low again. These old crassulas. I think this is too tight in there. I, I can't um, really, I could do with this Colin Coey. Look at this little Colin Coey that just, you know, it's just like, hey, I'm gonna just grow right up. That's one of those ones that will grow really tall. It'll be like the Statue of Liberty here soon. Let's put that in there. I might just try to plant up one of these guys. A few of them on the side here. Start all over again. Gotta make sure they don't dry out though. This is hard because whether they root or not, who knows. One of those ones that it's a plant that could look a little bedraggled after a while. This is like one of those sedums that I might just attempt to plant in here again. Give him a little place, so, even though he's a little leggy. He'll find his way. Knock off a few of the leaves so wow that one's a full salad bowl right there look at that man i hold this right here for a little while and um i'll build up my arm muscles a little bit more <laughs> so this is nice so this kleinia petrea right here it's hard to see at this angle maybe i'll show it to you like this um that's actually flowering for me in the other room so, it's, this one's not in flower right now, but hopefully they'll eventually will be. They kind of smell a little bit like um, dandelions. It's kind of like this kind of tanginess. Look at that. All right, well, that's another one. All potted up. I kind of feel like I could put this away for right now. I have some more that need to be potted up, but I think uh, I think that's all for today. I made quite a mess here, so <laughs> I'm gonna have to spend some time cleaning this up and vacuum cleaning the rug, because yes, there's a nice silk carpet underneath where I'm doing all this potting, which ugh, not sensible in the workroom, especially because I do some of my potting here now in the workroom, as opposed to the kitchen. But I hope you enjoyed that, just a little potting tutorial of watching me pot my very leggy grown out succulents, which like I said, super common to happen, especially in the windowsill. So if you want them nice and compact, you might have to cut them back, propagate them, get some new ones and make it look as good as new.